Following a lengthy journey, the plans for an Imperial superweapon stolen during the Battle of Scarif were delivered to the Rebel base on Yavin 4, along with something else, an Imperial tracking beacon. To the Rebel Alliance, it was clear they now only had one option, destroy the Imperial superweapon known as the DS-1 platform, more commonly known as the Death Star, or Face Annihilation. However, the Rebel Alliance faced a notable challenge. Most of their fleet had been destroyed during the Battle of Scarif, and all they had left to defend their base was a fleet of snub fighters. X-Wings and Y-Wings in particular. Still, realizing that this was their only option for survival, the decision was made to do the best they could with the resources at hand, and they began briefing their pilots. After studying the plans for the Death Star, they had discovered a weakness, a thermal exhaust port that led from the end of a trench all the way down into the main hypermatter reactor at the core of the battle station. A single shot down this thermal exhaust port would cause a chain reaction in the hypermatter reactor and ultimately destroy the station itself. Meanwhile, the Imperials, believing their station to be indestructible, jumped it into the system unescorted and began making their way towards Yavin, approaching the planet from behind and beginning to make their way around the gas giant to line up a shot on Yavin 4, the moon that was home to the rebel base. As the Death Star approached Yavin, the fighters were scrambled. A total of 30 starfighters took off from the base on Yavin 4. Eight Y-Wings from Gold Squadron, 12 X-Wings from Red Squadron, and 10 X-Wings from Green Squadron. These fighters made their way around Yavin and began approaching the battle station. As the fighters drew close to the surface of the battle station, they immediately began contending with a series of point defense laser cannons and turbo lasers situated across the surface of the Death Star. Now in traditional Imperial fashion, a vast majority of these weapons were turbo lasers geared towards heavy capital ships and not light, nimble starfighters. However, there were some point defense laser cannons that did pose a very serious threat to the starfighters. And it was ultimately these point defense cannons that claimed the first Imperial kill of the battle, Red Six, known as Porkins. However, seeing that the threat consisted primarily of smaller starfighters, the decision was made to scramble a flight of TIE fighters, led by Iden Versio. This flight of 12 TIE IN standard space superiority fighters posed a far greater threat to the rebel starfighters than the point defense turrets did. Ultimately, the arrival of these TIE fighters resulted in a large dogfight ensuing over the surface of the battle station. However, the fight slowly crept closer and closer to the base of the trench, and eventually a trio of Y-Wings from Gold Squadron were able to break off and began their attack run. Proceeding into the trench, they flew low and fast, trying to dodge the point defense lasers within the trench as they made their way towards the exposed thermal exhaust port. However, seeing a threat to the battle station and understanding the risk that these fighters posed to such a massive construct, Darth Vader scrambled in his personal TIE X-1 Advanced Starfighter. The Sith Lord was able to maneuver in behind the Y-Wings and easily take all three of them out, preventing the first row of Rebel Starfighters from approaching the exhaust port. With the elimination of the first flight of Y-Wings from Gold Squadron, the decision was made for a trio of X-Wings from Red Squadron to proceed into the trench next. This flight in the trench consisted of Red Leader Garvin Drees, Red 10 Theron Net, and Red 12 known as Puck Nako. And while this trio of X-Wings began their attack run, the rest of Red Squadron, as well as Green Squadron and what remained of Gold Squadron, kept the TIE Fighters busy over the trench. However, they were unable to distract Darth Vader's TIE Fighters, who quickly swung in behind the advancing X-Wings. Ultimately, Vader was able to clear out Red 10 and Red 12, however, Red Leader was able to get a shot off on the exhaust port before pulling up out of the trench. Unfortunately, this first shot glanced off the side of the opening to the exhaust port and impacted behind it, ultimately failing to make its way down the exhaust shaft. Having now pulled up from the trench, he was easy pickings for the advancing TIE fighters from below, led by Darth Vader. However, before he was able to be destroyed, he gave one final order for another flight from Red Squadron to carry out a follow-up run. The final flight down the trench consisted of three more X-Wings from Red Squadron, the leader of which was Red 5, Luke Skywalker. He was flanked on one side by Red 2, Wedge Antilles, and by Red 3, big Stark Lighter. With Vader's ties having pulled out of the trench to pursue the first squadron, they were able to get a good portion of the way down the trench run before the arrival of Darth Vader's TIE Fighters. However, Vader was able to eventually swing in behind and take out Biggs Dark Lighter and force Wedge Antilles to wave off. With both of his wingmen now out of the trench, one being deceased and the other having withdrawn from the engagement, Luke Skywalker was the only remaining Rebel pilot on track to take a shot at the thermal exhaust port. Meanwhile, the Death Star 
Star was inching closer and closer to its firing position against Yavin 4. The battle was coming down to the wire. As Darth Vader was lining up a shot on the last remaining X-Wing, a YT-1300 freighter known as the Millennium Falcon entered the battle space and fired a few wayward shots at the TIE fighters pursuing Luke Skywalker. This shot ultimately distracted the Imperial forces pursuing Skywalker's X-Wing and resulted in a crash within the trench. This impact bumped Darth Vader's TIE fighter off course and sent it careening into space, leaving Luke Skywalker cleared to make his shot against the thermal exhaust port, a shot that happened to be the lucky shot that saved the Rebel Alliance. With the torpedoes going straight down the shaft and making their way towards the hypermatter reactor at the heart of the battle station. With this shot fired, all Rebel forces withdrew from the battle space and began making their way back to Yavin as the battle station met its untimely end. The destruction of the Death Star ultimately had massive ramifications across the galaxy. It was a very public display of the fallibility of the Empire and the capability of the Rebel Alliance. An event that was so significant that it is often credited as the moment the Empire was doomed for failure. While the Battle of Yavin was relatively small and didn't involve massive vehicles or capital ships, simply an engagement in between starfighters, it had massive ramifications on the history of the galaxy, and while it was a fascinating battle on its own, it doesn't exist in a vacuum. The Battle of Yavin ultimately couldn't have occurred without the Battle of Scarif, which had occurred just a while prior and resulted in the Rebel Alliance having possession of the plans necessary to plan this attack. And if you'd like to learn about the Battle of Scarif, particularly the space battle over Scarif that cost the Rebel Alliance their fleet, I'll leave a link in the upper right hand corner to my battle analysis on that engagement. And if you have any other battles you'd like to see covered in future episodes of battle analysis and added to the archive, you can leave them down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.